Welcome back, everybody, to another exciting Duckman Cycles and VW Garage. Back here behind me, here we have this wonderful 1974 Goldfish Bowl Super Beetle, which, as you know, we got the engine running on it quite well. There's the Goldfish Bowl, by the way. Look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, we're over here. We're working on some wiring today. We're going to try to get the wiring hooked up to the alternator, all the engine wiring stuff. We're going to try to do the tail lights, and I think that will just about complete the rear end. I think this is the... Uh, defroster wire or something. I'll have to do a little research to find out what that connects to. That was a little mystery to me. But once this stuff is set up, it'll be nice to see the engine start and run from the key. And it'll also be nice to see the taillights working. Now we can jump up to the front and get the front lights working, which may or may not happen in this video. Get the turn signals put back on. And then I gotta rewire the dashboard. And this being a stupid beetle, things on here are a little different. So that's going to be an experience because I haven't wired a stupid beetle before. Just standards. So the routing is going to be a little different. Wiring colors are mostly the same because anything that's been built by Bosch, that's right, Volkswagen contracted Bosch to do their wiring harnesses. The coloring is pretty much the same across all Bosch wiring harnesses, whether it be on a Pook moped or whether it be on a Volkswagen Beetle. That's right. Yellow is your headlight. Brown is your ground. I mean, just, you know, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> Gray is your taillight. I mean, these are just colors that I remember because I started with a poop moped first before I ever moved over to the Volkswagen world. Anyway, there's the wires we got here in the taillights. There's our taillights themselves. A little disappointed. That one has a hole in it. It looks like something may have been bouncing on it in transit. I'll let the uh, owner know about that. But otherwise, Licky, like it, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to plug that dingle bell so you get updates every time I upload a video. Check out duckshit.net for all my different social media links. And we'll be back right after that intro. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Let's go ahead and start out with engine wiring. There's not too much to this stuff. We'll pull the air cleaner off here just so we can actually see everything. We'll put a bag down in here in the intake so that way it can swallow the bag once again when we get on the key, right? <laughs> if you didn't watch the last video, yeah, I did that. Because guess what? Even the duck man makes mistakes. We're going to pull off the old red wire. This is the wiring harness that I use temporarily to get this engine started, which, by the way, this thing runs beautifully runs so nicely. I got so many compliments on it from people that they were just amazed at how well it ran and I'm like, you know, I did tune to it but I didn't actually build the engine. But nonetheless, this engine is it's in good shape. It seems like it's going to do the right thing. So, we got our wire here. We got this red one. This is our charging cable from the alternator. I had to widen the hole on it. This wiring harness was set up for a generator. The alternator, it pretty much uses the same connections. Or I should say the same wiring, but some of the connections are a little different. This, for example, here, I needed to waller out that hole so that way it actually fit over the uh, stud that's on here. This goes directly to the battery. Uh-oh. I just dropped my nut. Don't you just hate it when your nut drops? It's way down in there, too. Well, good thing I have just the tool with me in case I make such a mistake because I do this thing on a regular and I don't usually talk about it. I usually keep it off camera, but I have a nut recoverer which of course doesn't want to reach my nut. Oh, it's just out of reach. <laughs> you guys get to see the duck man mess up. Oh yeah, I know I love it when I mess up. How did that nut get so far over to one side? All right, well, we're gonna have to try a different probe. Yeah. At least it's not a Ford probe, right guys? Yeah. Oh, and it went down even further. But now I might be able to get to it with the tool here. There it is. See? Nut has been recovered. Laugh at me all you want. In fact, I invite you to laugh at me. Sometimes it's fun to laugh. I know I love to laugh. I laugh at myself more than anybody else does. Often because I cover up my mistakes before anybody else even notices them. So that's what separates a good mechanic I'm a bad mechanic. Not that I am a mechanic. I'm just a hack job, but I get the job done, you know. All right, our green wire is the one that connects to the idiot light. And then the brown wire here, the brown wire here is the one that connects to ground. And most alternators and or generators have a screw on the side of the body of the unit, 
which is what this goes through. And I hate that it's a horseshoe, or not a horseshoe rather, because if it was a horseshoe, I wouldn't have to completely remove the screw. Because whenever I completely remove these things, I always manage to drop them as I just demonstrated a minute ago. So I'll put the screw in there. Get this thing wound in. Noisy neighborhood today, guys. Everybody's getting off of work. I don't know why there's so much activity. There's people hanging out in their front yards and there's some ding-dongs across the street trying to start a car with a dead battery and I don't know, they're just not really doing it the way I would do it, but why does that not feel right as I'm threading this in here? Something wrong. Come on now. Why is this screw so long? It only needs a few turns on. Fuck's sake. All right, there it is. We are grounded. Alternator is now effectively connected. This wire was what went to our fuel pump before. We don't have an electric fuel pump on here, so this is gonna go away. Don't need that anymore. Instead, we're gonna use this black wire that comes from the harness. It goes to the positive side of the coil. Here we go. And this blue wire, this one, connects down under there to the oil switch. That's the oil pressure switch down below under here. The great thing about these wires on most wiring harnesses, they are the correct length for where they should reach. So if they're not going so somewhere, they, they don't reach there, then clearly that's not where they belong. Anyway, here we go. That looks pretty good. This can come off. We don't need this here anymore. This was the ground we were using for the fuel pump before. I shouldn't be using needle nose on this, but I'm going to. <laughs> nope, looks like I can't. Okay, I need a 10 millimeter on there. And I don't have that here right at this second, so we're gonna come back to that. All right, let's look at these tail lights. All right, these are elephant foot tail lights, as they call them. And why do they call them that? It's because, well, look at the profile of them. Big flat round thing, just like an elephant's foot. These suckers have four screws in them, unlike most Volkswagen taillights, which usually have three. I think some of the early, early ones had none. <laughs> but anyway, uh, go inside here. All oh, the bolts and screws are things are falling out. Oh, and this is full of LED bulbs. Well, that's very often an issue because a lot of the devices on Volkswagens, um, they don't like to be connected to LEDs. They have issues with that sometimes. There should be a rubber gogi that goes around this here. It also seals the back of this when it goes in there. I don't see it. I'm going to look in the parts bin real fast and just see if we've got it. If we've got it, great. I'll connect it. If we don't have it, well, I'm going to go without it. It's easy enough to add it later, but we'll avoid that just today then. What we're going to do is we're going to pull out the entire reflector packets inside of here. These, I got too much crap in my hands. Way too much crap in my hands. Duck man, you're carrying too much crap. You know this? Here we go. Come on, let go. There we go. Now what we can do is we can install the fixture just like so. Putting all the screws and everything back in where they belong. And then we can snake the wire through in the tail end here. Just like that. All right, so we'll look and see if we have the rubber gogi that goes on there. If we don't have it, well, then you don't get one. All right, as it turns out, there's no rubber gogi. So what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna go ahead and get this elephant foot tail light mounted on here. I think there's supposed to be a rubber that goes around this thing too, but you know what? I didn't see one of those in there either. Maybe I need to recheck. I'm gonna look one more time through the uh, parts kit that was given to me, and if there's a rubber gogi in there to go underneath this entire elephant foot, the big surround, we're gonna install it. These things are just, they look better with it. You don't have to have it, it does look better with it. It really doesn't seal anything out, because <laughs> if you go under the tail light, you just go under the fender, so it's not really sealing anything out. But we'll have a quick look for it, see if I can find it. I don't even know why I bothered putting those screws in, but they're done, so. <laughs> Let's go see what we can find. All right, there were no rubber gogies to go underneath these things. So, 
Like I said, you don't have the rubber googies, and you don't get one. They're real easy to go in later, though. It's four screws, come out. Just loosen the screws, slip the gogi under it, and tighten them back down. I mean, I've been contracted to do was make these things work, not dick around with a bunch of things that are missing parts. Nope. No, sir. Okay. millimeter nut on the back side these don't need to be overly tightened if you tighten them too much you'll crack the plastic just cinch them up there we go all right going by what we've got here we got this light apparatus we already know Brown is ground, so that's easy enough. That just simply connects right to the chassis. Black is our turn signal. And I believe it's the same on both sides. And that's because each individual tail light has its own harness versus the main harness in the vehicle. The um, gray one and the... Uh, what the hell is going on here? Is that the wrong bulb socket in there? No, it's missing a part. There's a clip missing. Look at that. I can't even finish this if I wanted to anyway because it's missing stuff. I have to look around in the parts bin and see if uh, if it exists anywhere. This is a... Uh... In fact, it's not even in there right. They're in backwards. Somebody was messing around here. This is supposed to be in this way. And that's supposed to be bent down like that. Yeah, it's missing a clip. Now, I don't know which one is which. Um, I do know that the blue is the backup. So you can put that on the bottom. But the red and the gray that are here, one of these is for tail light, which is the gray. And the red one is for brake light. So I think that's going to be brake light to high. I mean, logically, that makes sense to me. I don't know. I'm going to have to electrically test that. But we're missing a clip in here anyway. So you might have to replace a portion of this light. I'll look in the bin and see if it's missing anywhere, but as far as we're going here, that's as done as I can get it. So we're not going to put the lid on that one yet. We have got this one mounted in the same way. Once again, brown is ground. Black is our turn signal. I like to get these as untangled as possible. Black is our turn signal. There we go. Blue is our backup light. And then the red and gray is our tail light and our brake light. But you notice here we have two terminals to connect. One of these was missing from that other light. Now again, I don't know which one is a which on here. Looks like the bulb's not even in the socket properly anyway. So when it comes to testing it, I wouldn't have even been able to. Come on now. There it is. Now we're just gonna guess. If it's wrong, well, we'll switch it back. It's not gonna hurt anything. All right, there they are. Now the clip in here is busted. Previous, the clip in here is busted. The owner actually did that, and that wasn't me. That's the way I found it. It really doesn't matter too much because this is still going to fit in there. As long as one of the clips is in place, it'll still snap in. So this will go in just like this here. These LED bulbs, man, these things bother me just looking at them. I have so many issues with these and they're not bright. Don't use LED bulbs on your Volkswagens, guys. These retrofit bulbs are just, they're, they're awful. There it is, it's in. Okay. And then our lens would simply go on just like this. Oops, the reflector's out. Oh, no, it's there, never mind. It's a piece of tin that's on the inside. Make sure it's there. Yes, I'm gonna just lightly turn these screws in because we might find ourselves taking this back apart again if those stop lights and the um, tail lights are reversed. 
there if there's any loose connections. But there is our very dirty tail light. That's how dirty they came to me. I didn't do that, you know, storing them around here. It's actually the way they came out of the car. Yeah, right, well, there's one elephant foot. And there's the other one, which we know we can't finish. I'm going to look around in the car real quick just to see if that uh, little clip is in there anywhere. If it is, I'll restore it to where it's supposed to go. And then we can do a little testing back here and see if these things work. I was going to start messing with some of the switches and things on the inside, but I can't find the key for some reason. I don't know where it went. I figured I'd just come back here and try to get the last of the tins installed while I was thinking about it. Not that I'm going to forget, because eventually I'll come across the part that's not installed. That went in easy. There needs to be a screw here, a screw way over here, a screw way over there, one right in here, and then these little caps go on the ends over here. And this car actually does have the caps. It's one of the only cars I've ever seen that actually did have them. It's kind of amazing. <laughs> I also put on the uh, deck lid hinges, um, well, the receptacles with the hinges attached to it, anyway, the mounts, brackets, whatever the hell they are. Anyway, they're there. Fantastic, good. Okay, a few things going in the right direction here. I'm gonna dig out those screws or somewhere in one of those bins and I'll just run them in real fast. But otherwise, that lid is just about ready to go on. All right, this wire back here that I thought was like rear window defroster or something, it's probably <laughs> for the license plate light. That makes a whole lot of sense because guess how long it is? It's the exact amount that it needs to be. So we're just gonna tuck that out of the way because we'll come back to that later. But we've got the lid right here. And the lid is interesting because it's got, I'll try to turn you so you can see, there's a hinge over here, there's a hinge way over here, and then you got your deck lid spring, which looks like it happens to be installed upside down. So we're gonna fix that too. That's obnoxious. But all right, no big deal. Anyway, um, <laughs> We'll get the sucker mounted up. We're gonna show you the method to do that. It's really not too hard. It's quite simple if you know the right way. Right, the trick to these is really simple. Put your deck lid into its hinge position. Get one of the screws, any of the screws. I usually start on the right side. Just one of them. Lift your deck lid out like this. Hook your deck lid spring in where it needs to go. And then simply scissor the deck lid in position and there it is. Now just run the rest of the bolts in and it's done. <laughs> it's really that easy. I've seen people fiddle with them in all different ways, screwdrivers and wrenches and pliers, trying to squeeze the spring and get, and there's no, it's just don't. <laughs> That's the easiest way. I know you guys can't see it too well, but uh, this wire for the license plate light is actually gonna go up through a, a hole in the back of the deck right here and then come up inside the um, license plate light. This is not a Pope's nose. The Pope's nose is only found on, uh, actually, split window beetles. It actually looked like a nose. This is not a bad fit for a first try. It's a little bit pulled in, so I gotta loosen the bolts and just slide it out just a hair, but I mean, otherwise, it's in where it needs to be. So, there it is. This car is a lot more complete than it was, that's for sure. All right, we're losing daylight out here quickly. And we're missing parts on this uh, this tail light. So I'm just going to put this together just so we don't lose anything. It also helps protect it from the elements for whatever it's worth. I don't know if those parts are individual or replaceable, or if we're going to find ourselves buying a new light fixture, which looks like this might already be the new one. There we go. Why don't this fit together very well? There it goes. There it goes. Duck man, you were pushing in and off center. Duck man, do you always miss the hole? Yes, yes I do. Okay. I'm not gonna tighten them all away because it doesn't matter whether or not I do. We will be taking this one apart for sure. Once again. There we go. All right, don't mind that building alarm in the background. That thing does that for years. I don't even know why it does it. Who does it? It's way off in the distance. Nothing I ever bothered to investigate because when I'm in the house, I don't even hear it. When you're outside, you do hear it in the background, way off in the distance. That's our air cleaner on there. 
Here's our lid. There we go. Looks like this needs to be addressed here. This is kind of coming apart. Don't want to lose a license plate, even though it's expired. And when it comes time to renew it, who knows, this plate might have even belonged to the previous, previous owner. <laughs> Snug it up so it doesn't come off just because. All right, there it is. Much more complete than it was before. But since it's now effectively dark, that means we're just going to wrap up this video. So, you know the drill, guys. Like you like it, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to pluck that dingle bell so you get updates every time I upload a video. Check out DuckShit.net for all my different social media links. And, uh, well, I don't know. Maybe we'll have a walk around. Probably first thing in the morning, I think I'll do that. While it's still not too warm out and it's comfortable. And I can even go outside. Who knows? It might even be a little bit of a sweater weather with uh, temperatures down in the 60s. But I guess we'll see. <laughs> Would be nice. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. All right, look at these guys. It's the first time I'm making a video of them. This is their box and what they did to it after just a couple days. I wanted to show you guys just how messy ducklings are. This happens to be the bowl that I watered Skeeter in over 20 years ago. That was Skeeter's first bowl. And these two guys are, well, they're so cute. And they're pretty well behaved for the most part, but yeah, they're screaming because they emptied their water dish and they ate all their food and clearly they've shit everywhere in here. <laughs> and I love you guys, but you guys stink. I have to take everything back outside again and uh, get you a new cardboard box. I mean, you did this in two days. Two days! You know, they get into the size where they, they plaster things with poop when they were little. There's just little bombs all over the place. You could just kind of clean them up and you don't have to change the blanket out. But now they're plastering everything with poop. And it only takes a couple days. And they eat like you can't imagine. I mean, they just eat and eat and eat and eat. And water when it comes to ducklings. They consume more water than any animals that I've ever had in the past. I mean, even large dogs, they will consume more water than large dogs. They don't splash it. They drink it. And then, of course, it comes back out of them and they make plaster. <laughs> you guys are stinky. Still don't know if they're boys or girls yet. I'm looking at their tails, and sometimes when the tails get spiky looking, that means male. I don't see spiky tails, I see kind of foofy tails. So I guess we'll see in time here. Also, their heads, their foreheads are kind of round, which is again a signal of uh, being female. You guys are a little spooked of me, I don't understand why. Oh no, you're not spooked, you're looking at my hand for food. Yeah, you guys are fine. Boy, you're loud! You're hurting my ears! You guys are incredibly loud! <laughs> Alright, we'll get you some food and water. We're gonna clean your box out after that, because I know you're just gonna trash it again if I feed you more of you right now. You know what? You guys are gonna go outside today, too. You guys have been around on this earth for just about two weeks. In fact, you came home two weeks ago, I think, uh, tomorrow. It'll be two weeks, and I think you're just a little older than that, so... Yeah, you guys. We're gonna go play in Boomer's pool today. I think that's what we're gonna do. Take you outside, and we'll put you in Boomer's swimming pool. How's that sound? You gotta watch out that Boomer don't beat you up. Yeah, they good babies. Look at you. <laughs> that little head. That little head. <laughs> Alright. Signing off. We'll be back in a little while.